Hello there. Today I am taking you for a tour of one of our better known tea factories close to Hatton Town, Vanaraja, which means King of the Forest in the central province of Sri Lanka in the Dikoya Planting District. It's about half a kilometer from Dikoya town and its closest railway station is at Hatton which is 4.8 kilometers away. The factory is located at a very convenient location overlooking Hatton Bogomantalava Main Road. I entered the boundary of the estate from Castle Reservoir End after briefly admiring the reservoirs, uh, uh, the surrounding uh, Vanaraja group of plantations, including Wali and Thamaville divisions, bordering Castle Reservoir, giving them additional attraction to their beautiful tea field. I was told the waters of the reservoir helped the surrounding estates maintain a cool temperature and also helps in providing abundant rainfall throughout the year. I did experience the coolness in the atmosphere while traveling through the area. You will note this episode is more on the historical Wally Church than the factory itself as the church is holding a huge wealth of historical facts pertaining to ex-British planters, British soldiers and their families. The signboard Vanaraja Tea Processing Center on the road on the roadside greets the visitors, though access to this building is subject to some restriction. For security reasons, naturally due to its close proximity to the main road. I must thank the Deputy General Manager, Mr. Vijit Kariwasam, who gave me a great insight into the history of Vanaraja factory. He showed me a photograph where the last of the British planters, Mr. Alexander Mackey, was given a farewell when he retired after serving the plantation from 1955 to 1971. It was amazing to see Miss Enid, Enid Kershaw was one time owner of this uh, property, to in the picture, a famous lady who had been living in Wally Division bungalow even after the estates were nationalized in the 1970s. Vanaraja Wana produces high grown teas that are full of brightness, character and strength with distinctive flavor. Naturally, its broken orange peco or BOP teas have often proven to be the topmost BOP tea available in the world. Photographing the factories in its entirety proved difficult from a correct distance as part of this building is below the main road on one side and the, and the small river runs on the other side. Where Vandraja Tea Garden is concerned, I should say there is more to be told about the estate and the church than the factory itself. There is a historic church, Wally, Wally Division, where a larger number of British nationals have been buried than the natives. As suggested by Mr. Kariwasam, I made a beeline to this church. I felt as if I was walking straight into a cemetery in Britain, as I could only see names of British nationals rather than any locals. Built in 1878, the church was gifted by an Englishman, William Scott. The church conducts two services on the first and third Sundays of the month. A resident caretaker is available at all times to help visitors and worshippers. He showed me around the church and I was amazed to see two Bibles printed in the 1860s still being used for sermon by the vicar who visits the church to conduct prayers. I was told these Bibles were the first to be donated to the church after it was built. There is an ancient piano and an armchair used in the early days which are now kept as museum masterpieces. The caretaker showed me around some of the tombs which took me down memory lane. One was a famous tea planter, Mr. John Turnbull, who was one of the last British planters who worked at Rothschild District, Pusalava District. I fain to remember him as I too was attached to the co same company which owned Rothschild Estate. It was Eastern Produce and Estates Limited. The view of Castle Reservoir and the surrounding tea area from the church was breathtaking. The reservoir can be viewed from many angles and from, it, from here it gave me an entirely different feeling of peace. Volumes can be written or told about the, the historical figures behind Wally Cemetery. When I was about to leave the place, the caretaker mentioned about the tomb outside the entrance to the church, that it belonged to the first British Inspector General of Police, Mr. Campbell. The letters carved on the cross had long disappeared. I was able to find some interesting facts about him. According to Ferguson Directory 1897, quote, On January 21, 1884, Mr. G. W. R. Campbell, Inspector General of Police, while travelling on the Hambantata Road at night, is awakened by an elephant thrusting his trunk into the cart where he is sleeping. Mr. Campbell jumps out and is, and is seriously hurt by the wheels of the cart going over his legs. The armed police constable on guard runs away with the elephant after him. Mr. Campbell is carried to Ratnapura." Unquote. It appears Mr. Campbell has continued to work till he retired on 11 April 
1891. The idea of police is the public, public is the police was originated by Sir W. W. R. Campbell, according to Sunday Island, 6 October 2012. Perhaps the only non-Britisher's tomb I, I found was of Reverend uh, N. Y. S. D. Ponnaya, and in the time he was a priest who, who conducted prayers in the church. I spent quite a lot of time in this church, marveling at the structure and elegance of the building. The numerous tombs with their engravings took me back to the 18th century when the British ruled the land and established thousands of acres of tea plantations. Thank you very much. I see you again. Bye.